Hey guys, so as the title suggests, um, this video is just kind of my thoughts as a first time um, Ironman uh, finisher. Uh, and maybe if, if you're thinking about doing uh, an Ironman or if you've, if you've already signed up for one, you've got it coming up and you're a first timer, maybe this video could help you because uh, I learned a lot out there uh, and I'm just gonna share my thoughts. So any, anywho, I just did Ironman Texas um, last weekend. So today is Wednesday. The race was last Saturday. So I've got a few days down. Um, I traveled home Sunday and then I've had Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday completely off where I'm doing nothing. I'm getting a little antsy. I'm ready to, to go run again. I have a coach that, uh, that says that's not a great idea. Uh, so I think I'm going to start back tomorrow, ease back into it and I'll have a, maybe a, a normal run on Sunday, um, six or seven miles. Uh, but anywho, so uh, I was in the Woodlands, Texas um, for my first race. I had done a 70.3. I, I have been doing endurance sports for several years. I've done, you know, the sprints and all that stuff. And then I did 70.3 North Carolina last year and just decided to give the full a go. Uh, I, I had a really good positive experience, um, but it was all relayed back to my training. And it's all linked to my training. Um, I, I remember asking my coach, um, when I decided I was going to do it, I said, I would really love to have you, um, if you don't want to coach me through a full, I get that because that's an undertaking. Uh, I think I could do it from a book or, or from online. I now know that to not be true. I, I don't think I could have done this, um, uh, with trainingpeaks.com with just one of their generic plans. Or, or with Tridot or, uh, or the book, uh, Be Iron Fit. I've got that book. I think it's a good book. I just don't know if it would have properly prepared me for this race. Um, you know, my, my, my coach knew when I was, when I was dinged up or uh, the injuries that I had had in the past, et cetera, and, and we adapted the training. Uh, move back chance as we went on. So anyway, anyway, I started my training block for this after um, 70.3 North Carolina. So I had a good fitness base. And, and that's one thing I can certainly tell you to do is that if you're gonna train for a full Ironman, make sure you have a, a solid base. Uh, couch to Ironman would be a very difficult thing to do. Um, so we started six months and we eased into it. Like for the first month or two, it was like, I kind of felt like I was under training because it just wasn't that bad and we eased into it. But it was the whole like frog, uh, in, in, in boiling water, you know, story that we hear of, of it's just cut up very slowly. Before you know it, it's boiling, but you don't realize it because you've been, you've been in that warm water for so long. And so I'll be honest with you, I never felt overstressed in training. Um, I was training between 10 and 15 or 16 hours a week. Uh, I would go three weeks on and then a down week, three weeks on, then a down week. And at the end, that switched to kind of one on, one off. Um, my, my longest run was 16.2. Uh, my longest ride ended up only being 80 because we, we trained through the winter here. So I didn't, I really didn't get outside much. A lot of that was done on the trainer. So I had some, some four hour training rides in my garage on, on my kicker, um, which helped, which, which was good. Honestly, it, it helped me be mentally tough. Uh, and then I would swim, uh, I think my longest swim was 3,600 yards. So I, I never did any of the distances in, a, in an Ironman before the Ironman, and I did them all that day back to back. Um, so I, I trained hard, I trained smart, I trained six days a week. Most days I had two things to do. And uh, lucky for me, I don't have a nine to five job, so I don't go into, into work until the afternoon. So I had all morning. So I would wake up around eight o'clock in the morning, 7.30, and then I'd start training by 8.30 and I'd be done by 11. So I had the whole morning off and that helped me a lot. I don't actually know how easy that would be if you worked from eight to five and fitting all that in uh, around that schedule. Um, so any, anyway, training went really well. Uh, I had a really good taper and then we flew out to Texas um, on that Wednesday. Check-in went really well. We rented a house. We didn't stay at the host hotel. We rented a house about 15 minutes away. It had a pool, had a hot tub. Uh, two other guys from town were racing. So all of our families went and we shared this big house. Um, the, the check-in was easy. Athlete check-in was easy. Uh, I had done a 70.3, like I said, so it was kind of familiar. Um, we, we got our bags, went back to the house, packed up. And then on Friday, uh, we turned our bikes in, uh, and our, and our run and bike bags. And then we kept special needs with us. 
Um, anyway, moving on to the race, uh, it went just really well. It was, um, I executed that, I think, about as well as a first-timer can, or at least for, you know what, let me, for me, I executed as well as I can. Um, I didn't set any course records. Uh, my initial goal, I was thought I could go sub-13, um, but I'll be honest with you, my primary goal was to be happy. I, I did not want that to be uh, a suffer fest. I didn't want it to be a death march. And I wanted to do it again. I wanted to finish that race and go, you know what? I want to do this again. I don't want to finish and go, that's it. And I'm never doing triathlon again. And, and I think that happens to a lot of people. I had a pretty decent DNF rate. So we're watching the weather and, and the temperature got up to like, prediction was like 87 degrees on race day in Texas. So that, that's fairly warm. Uh, and so we knew we were going to have some heat. And keep in mind, I haven't been in the heat at all. We trained all winter in South Carolina. Um, so I didn't have any heat exposure at all. Uh, we didn't know if it was going to be wetsuit legal. I was going to wear the wetsuit anyway because I knew it would be optional. It ended up being wetsuit legal at 75 degrees, which helped me a lot. I really love swimming in a wetsuit. Um, anyway, so race start, swim went well. I'd never swam that far before. I just put my head down got on somebody's feet and, and went. And before I know it, I swam the, the 2.4 miles uh, in about an hour and 28, 29 minutes. Super easy. Got out of the water, no stress, no, uh, hadn't been taxed at all. At all. Uh, got out, went into my changing tent, which was new for me because those are, those are now back. Changed into a bike kit and got on the bike for the longest bike ride of my life. Uh, I'm a pretty decent cyclist on a flat, flat course with no wind. I would probably pedal that at a 20 miles an hour. Um, there was a wind that day. There was a headwind for 40 miles. And so my miles an hour were like 13 or 14 miles per hour going out and then back and then out and back again. So coming back, I was going 30 miles an hour, but in, I was like, sometimes I was at nine and everybody was except the pros, which is crazy to me. Um, so I ended up averaging about 17 and a half miles an hour on the bike, which, you know, was fine. It took me about six hours and 20 minutes. Um, my nutrition was on point. I, I, I took in seven bottles of Gatorade Endurance that I mixed heavy, which had about 300 calories in it. So I was getting my sodium and my calories and my, and my liquid and my water in those bottles. I stopped at bike special needs and I ate a Chick-fil-A sandwich and I drank a Coke. I don't eat or drink either one of those in, in real life, but I thought that day it would go really well. Um, got off the bike, feeling 100%. Then I went on to the run. I'd never run a marathon. I'd never run more than 16 miles. Um, and man, it went great. I averaged about a 12, 15 mile, uh, which is way slow, right? But you're an Ironman. Uh, I just did with one aid station to the next and I, I ran. I never walked. I'd run at the aid station. I would dump two glasses of water over my head. The next table, I would drink a glass of Gatorade Endurance. The next table, I would get some pretzels or grapes or an orange slice. I'd eat that. Um, and then I would take one more glass of Gatorade and then I would take a glass of Coke, about a, three ounces of Coke, and I would drink that and then I'd run to the next aid station. And I did that for 26 miles in a row with a smile on my face the entire time. I licked base salt about every hour on the run. Oh, and by the way, I carried gels with me. So on the bike and on the run, I ate one gel an hour. So I went through a lot of gels. I had those in special needs of both bike and run. So that was pretty key too. I had no GI issues. Um, I had no issues at all. I finished the race smiling, um, just so excited. It was a, uh, one of the more significant days of my life um, and I'll, something I'll never forget. I hadn't stopped thinking about it since I finished. Um, so if, if you're thinking about an Ironman, as long as you train the right way, it can be one of the most rewarding things of your life. It certainly was for me. Uh, I'm, I'm signed up for Ironman Arizona, so I've got... 207 days until I do that. I'm going to do a 70.3 before. Um, I used the word obsession uh, earlier. I think the word obsession has a negative connotation. So I, I do have an obsession with working out, but not in a negative way. My wife says it's a midlife crisis, um, but I think it's a good one. So um, again, if you're thinking about doing one of these races, do it the right way. Train the right way. Get a coach and stay on top of your nutrition, hydration, and pacing. And I think you can have just the day I did because I'm the world's most average athlete. I just train a little bit better than average. Good luck.